So obviously, like, you know, um, as people will see, you know, if you go across and look at Brody's Instagram, any of his content, a lot of it is tips. It's, you know, breaking these misconceptions, myth busting these things, because, you know, everyone does it. So first thing you do, as soon as you hurt yourself, as soon as you get something wrong, you go and Google it. And it's probably the worst damn thing you could possibly do for yourself is go and Google, because it's always going to give you the worst case scenario. And a lot of your content obviously tries to break these misconceptions and um, some of these bad practices. So what would you say would sort of be like even your top five sort of beginner injuries that people could avoid if they just run smarter as you try to teach? Yeah, and I, I 100% agree. The, the Googling and a lot of people go into running Facebook groups and ask them as well. And the quality of answers that you get is just super low. Not only low, but a lot of it is contradicting as well people say like you should stretch some people say you shouldn't stretch some say you need to rest the injury some say no you just need to stay active and exercise through it and you know ice heat all this sort of stuff it's it's super contradicting and leaves people really really puzzled which takes me into the the social media side of things because in clinics i was constantly reiterating a lot of these concepts and trying to address a lot of these myths and misconceptions that runners hold and so that was the what led me into publishing like posts and blogs and podcast episodes, just trying to educate people around, okay, this is what the research shows. This is the facts. This is um, the misconceptions we will bust those. And just my goal, my mission is to, uh, to provide clarity and control to every runner. That's kind of like my mission and the clarity and them gaining control in their running is um, helps. It, it's very impactful that kind of statement for runners um, so the top five injuries that I currently see, one is knee pain. So there's several diagnoses around the knee, but commonly, especially in female runners, uh, the knee is definitely the problematic area. And that's just naturally because there's a lot of load that goes through that knee when um, people run. And if they run too much too soon if they have a huge spiky load some mostly it's the knee that will react um <clears throat> i see things further down so like achilles like the achilles tightness achilles soreness um, achilles tendinopathy that structure tends to be quite sore shin splints is a very common one so <clears throat> pain on the front of the shin plantar fasciitis is another one or well, it's the more uh common or the more accurate terminology is plantar fasciopathy because Itis refers to inflammation and we've now shown there's not a lot of inflammation in that area. What actually is that injury then in, in sort of layman's terms? Uh, in layman's terms, it's a overreaction or a kind of like a flare up of a certain structure. So the, the fascia isn't muscle, it's not tendons, ligament. It's like this thick fibrous band that acts as support and that can be overused. It can exceed its capacity if you say run in bare feet or if you walk in bare feet beyond your capacity to do so it will start reacting right. um so that's essentially what we call it uh the other one that i get very often is a high hamstring tendinopathy so a, a tendon that gets that reacts the one that attaches all the way up onto your sitting bone it's very common with so sort of sprinters and kind of triathletes and runners who decide to do a lot of hill work um they've the plantar fasciitis and the the high hamstring tendon they're the ones that if they're mismanaged for a long period of time it can be very very difficult to overcome and i've seen people with years and years of th these particular conditions so it can be quite tricky to overcome mm -hmm. would you say there's a difference then or is there a difference between people that do sort of different types of running as you said sort of hills endurance as opposed to flats and sprints and things like that yeah and <laughs> It, people might think it's just running, but there's a lot of variety that comes into it. And even the runner itself and people have different goals. People set themselves for like a, they want to do a 5k run and then they set themselves for a half marathon. Then they set themselves for a full marathon and just get either longer and longer or just more variety. And with that comes different loads on the body with that comes different um, stresses. Uh, and yeah, then we, there's, trail runs that can be involved there's track if people run around track where it's just doing circles and puts forces on the outside of one part of your body as opposed to the other right. um but hills are a big one hills throw different loads when you go uphill and different loads when you go downhill and someone 
we, we know that a lot of running injuries are due to doing too much too soon and overloading the body, but the um, there can be some subtle differences. People might have the same weekly mileage. They might have the same weekly distance, but they still get an overload injury because they have a rapid change in terrain. So they go from flats to then doing hills that changes the load on the body and you can still get an overload issue. Or say if you change your running technique too suddenly, or if you change your shoes to some a different type of shoe too rapidly, these are these force um, quick shifts, rapid shifts in load through the body. And then you can start developing right. overuse injuries without even changing your mileage. Yeah. The only thing I'll see, you know, I don't run. Um, I do martial arts, but I don't run. That's, that's my exercise. But um, for anyone that's watched the How to Be Bazinga on YouTube, um, that's why I'd asked that question because obviously he's from London, so he would have done a lot of his marathon training on the flat, just running on pavement. But then because the marathon was cancelled or whatever happened, he was doing it on like a country, like basically he was running through fields and like over sand. And he ended up like his time was screwed because he like hurt his foot and he would like stretch the tendons and or something like that and his knee went as well. But, and I assume that was just obviously down to going from hard concrete on the flat to hills, muck, sand and extra weight in your shoes, stuff like that. Yeah. And if, especially if you're doing some sort of sand or dirt or uneven ground, um, you won't get injured if you're, if you've, you slowly adapted to it, but if you're doing high mileage and you're doing high mileage on a road and then quickly transfer to high mileage on the ground, even when you contact the foot on an uneven surface, even if it's just subtle, it just, um, changes the angle of the foot, which means it shifts the load in a certain type of the foot. And if you repeat that hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundred thousands of times, every single step that you take, you, your tendons on that side of the foot aren't gonna be used to it. And then they're gonna start flaring up. And yeah, the same could be said if you adapt to grass and then go to concrete, um, that ground reaction force can lead to say stress fractures. Um, and yeah, it's, it's like anything, we, we want to try and avoid a rapid shift in change in terrain or um, your environment. And if you do have to change to a, a change in environment, we want to make sure that it's very gradual and then the body does its fantastic thing of adapting to whatever you're putting it through, but it needs to be in slow increments and it needs time in order to heal. You can't go straight to the gym and try and lift and try and bench 100 kilos. You need to take time to slowly adapt and slowly get stronger and um, yeah, the body does great things as adapting to it.